What's up, fellas? In the first of today's videos, we're gonna be talking about report around the New York Knicks. I feel like we've been doing a lot of Knicks content lately, and that's because they're competent, they're relevant, they're a really, really interesting team and franchise to take a look at. This report specifically indicates that they could be in the market either via trade or via free agency for a star or a superstar within the next 12 months. And as it relates to the Knicks, that is always an interesting topic, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at in today's video. But really quickly before we get started, if you enjoy content like this, then consider subscribing. I upload twice a day every single day on this channel, so it's the most consistent NBA content on YouTube. If you're new here, by the way, what's up? My name is Tucker. You can also leave a like rating on the videos as well if you're enjoying them, and check me out at various socials at the bottom of the screen and a link tree down in the description below if you want to hang out with me out side of these videos. With those things said, let's talk about the New York Knicks. So I'm just going to go ahead and read you the report and the little paragraph of it that's interesting. So per Brian Windhorst of ESPN, and again, we're quoting here, he says, I say within the next 12 months, a star slash superstar player demands a trade to New York. I don't know who it's going to be. I have some guesses. I'm not going to say right here. I'll let you guys start thinking about that. Let's put it this way. League executives certainly have some guesses, and I say by next year's trade deadline, a player, a superstar, all-star player tries to force his way there. So let's kind of talk about the context of this, then we'll get to some names, whether it be via trade, as Windhorse is talking about here specifically, or via free agency on down the line in 21-22. So, you know, the, the Knicks have always kind of relied on just their name, right, in order to attract free agents, attract stars. And it's almost worked a few times even while showing a very, very low level of competence when it comes to building a very good roster or uh, putting together a front office and a coaching staff that works well together. They haven't been one of the best organizations in the league uh, you know, over the last 10 to 15 years. The ownership situation is not great. And they turned a situation that should be a positive, being the Knicks, uh, and from a free agency standpoint, into a negative because being the Knicks meant dysfunction and it meant you know, incompetence. And they've done a much better job really remarkably in the last like nine months or so a little bit extended past that but you know ever since they got rid of phil jackson they've done some you know some good things in the front office and you know i think tom thibodeau being there as well gives them a, a level of professionalism that is really good and really healthy for this group uh, i had kind of questioned the thibodeau thing initially but it's worked out really well for them they're up over 500 they're having a good season and they've made some good moves some smart moves in the front office to position themselves to be you know in a really strong position here moving forward and they're now in a spot where being the Knicks means more than just the name on the front of the jersey and it means more than just the prestige that comes with the franchise but it means that you're going to a team that knows what they're doing and you can feel confident and you can feel comfortable going there and I would honestly argue that if the Knicks were in the position that they're in right now if you could just take this exact Knicks situation and transport it back to the summer of 2019 I think you could make a pretty convincing and compelling argument that Kyrie Irving and, and Kevin Durant or some other combination of free agents would have gone to New York in 2019. They're just they're about a year and a half late. I honestly think that they've done enough to to really show themselves to be a really good free agency destination, which isn't specifically what Windhorse is talking about here as he's talking about trades, but it's all part of the same conversation. So when we're talking about trade stuff, who are we talking about? What players could possibly request to be traded to New York. They just, they, they, they want to be a New York Knick. They want to pull Carmelo Anthony and just say, you know what? I want to be the guy that saved New York. I want to go play for the Knicks. I want to be in Madison Square Garden once fans come back. Who are those guys? Well, the first name on the list is, of course, Bradley Beal. I've speculated in previous videos that he does want to leave Washington. I don't think he's going to finish his current contract out as a Washington Wizard, but he's waiting until he has more leverage to potentially put himself in a situation that he wants to be, whether that be the Knicks or a different team. And the closer and closer he gets to being a free agent, the more and more leverage he has in deciding where he ends up being traded to because he can tell the trading team, hey, I don't want to be there. You know, he can have, like if Orlando calls up and says, hey, we want Bradley Beal, he can tell them, you know, I'm probably not going to re-sign there and Orlando's not going to be interested. And he can really shrink down the number of teams that are interested in trading for him and ultimately push himself to a particular team. And that team could end up being New York. Now, in terms of the assets you would have to give up in exchange for Beal, it would be significant. And the issue for um, you know, for New York is to kind of figure out, you know, who's the, the focal point of the trade. They've got their own picks. They've got Dallas picks. They've got random young guys they can throw in. They've got salary filler. But who's the core of the of the trade? 
Are you willing to give up R.J. Barrett? Are you willing to give up Mitchell Robinson? Are you willing to give up Julius Randle? You'd have to give up something more than just the random young guys and picks if you're going out to try and get Bradley Beal. But he is certainly on the list and probably at the top of the list. And I, I would imagine that he's the guy that teams are thinking about here prior to next trade deadline, potentially getting moved and most specifically being moved uh, to New York. The second name on the list is Carl Anthony Towns, only because of the context that he seems like the next guy that could become unhappy and want to leave Minnesota. They're not playing well. They're not a very good team. They're not a great organization. The issue with that is I don't know that the Thibodeau cat relationship is great. Um, obviously, that was a very strange situation at the time. Jimmy Butler was not a big fan of how everything went down there in Minnesota. And I wouldn't imagine that's a reunion that either of those, either the coach or the player, are looking forward to in New York. So we'll kind of put that one on the back burner here. The other one that's really interesting that would have to happen either as a sign and trade this offseason or prior to this trade deadline would be Victor Oladipo because I think he fits interestingly on that New York roster. I think that he wouldn't require as many assets as someone like Beal or, or Carl Anthony Towns would, obviously. And you can kind of get yourself in a position where you trade some stuff, you get Oladipo, you go into the summer of 2022, you have another max cap space slot, assuming you re-sign Oladipo to a significant contract. And Oladipo kind of helps you be even more competent, more interesting, and adds another player that a star, a true superstar, could see themselves playing around. Where if they send, you know, picks and young players to Houston, they're able to retain Julius Randle, RJ Barrett, Mitchell Robinson. You add Oladipo to those three guys, you go into the summer of 2022 with a max cap space slot, and you basically say, We've already got the other four guys. Let's go out and get someone. You fit in perfectly in this group. And let's do some some big things in New York. That's another you know guy to keep an eye on. Again, it would have to be before this trade deadline uh, or in the offseason as a sign-in trade. Now, as we mentioned the summer of 2022, um, we'll get into some of the free agency stuff here again, which is always a part of the whole adding a star slash superstar equation. So for 2021, uh, it's slim pickings at the moment. I mean, uh, Oladipo is a name to bring up who they can sign outright rather than trading for him. Either way, again, we've kind of talked about to that, that to this point. Uh, outside of that, like, I mean, I don't think Kawhi's leaving. Like, I'm not counting Kawhi on this list. Not a ton of really interesting options. But when you get to the summer of 2022, which again, I'm going to do a, a kind of a bigger video on eventually talking about some options there as the summer 2021 stuff has kind of died down. But you guys, you look forward to 2022. Three interesting names in the backcourt. Chris Paul, who will obviously be very old at that point, but should still be a good player. He's shown himself to, you know, really age pretty well. Steph, if he ever actually did want to leave Golden State, which I find unlikely, but he is a 2022 free agent at the moment. And then Zach Levine is another guy that I think could appreciate wanting to play for New York, um, could really provide them a nice scoring punch, and depending on what they have added to their roster by that point, could be a very interesting fit there in New York if they decide they want to pay him a ton of money. So those are three names to keep an eye on there for the summer of 2022, and also to keep in mind for that summer, depending on what the Mitchell Robinson extension looks like at that point, he will need a new contract at that point, depending on what that looks like they could have two max slots available in that summer or have already brought in a player previously like Oladipo on a less than max deal and then have another full max in 2022 because they've got a lot of salary cap space. They got to figure out what to do with Randall, with Mitchell Robinson, but if they really wanted to, they could potentially have two slots in the summer of 2022. So the ideal scenario here, honestly, in my opinion, is you end up with Oladipo somehow on a deal worth like $20, $25 million a year. You end up with him somehow, whether it be via trade or sign and trade or you sign him in the off season. Then you go and get someone in 2022 as well. You figure out what to do with Randall and, and Robinson on their, on their new deals. And you've got a, a core five that fits really, really well. Um, and of course, they always have, you know, the extra draft picks and stuff hanging around as well. Some of the other young guys that could potentially have some value. Uh, there are some really interesting moves here potentially for New York. I, I'm not convinced it's going to happen. Like I'm not locked in on this idea that within the next 12 months, the Knicks are going to get a star uh, because we've been here before plenty of times, right? And, it, and it's rarely if ever happened unless you count Amari Stoudemire and Joe Kim Noah. But I will say this, from a you know, a belief in the organization standpoint from a competency standpoint, I've never been more confident in the New York Knicks ability to sign a free agent or to get a big time star to want to come to New York than I am right now. My confidence level in that regard has never been higher than it is now. They've done a fantastic job. Uh, you know, the bar was pretty low, if I'm honest, because they've been so unsuccessful in that category and because people have wanted the Knicks to be good for so long. That, yeah, you know, we're kind of grading on a curve here. It's not like they've done anything out of this world fantastic, but they've done a good job. You know, they've certainly had some misses in the draft and they've had some young guys just kind of floating on the roster that have not really developed. But Barrett, Robinson, Randall, and Stuff 
is enough to, I think, entice a player to really, really want to go to New York. And it's certainly something to keep an eye on here over the next handful of months, uh, whether it be this month leading up to the trade deadline um, or, you know, going into next year prior to next year's trade deadline, trade deadline or in the offseason. The Knicks are going to be in the news a lot. And I feel more confident than ever that that news is legitimate as opposed to, you know, all the other summers and off seasons in which we thought that, you know, maybe the Knicks would be in play for stars uh, where I never really thought anything was actually going to happen. But yeah, that is going to be the end of the first video of the day. And I thank you guys very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you're looking for the second video of the day from me, I'm going to be talking about the Golden State Warriors, uh, the possibility that maybe they need to go all in, start looking to make some moves with this roster, with that future Minnesota pick with Wiggins, with Wiseman, be kind of making the case for that in terms of like what they should be doing here moving forward. But yeah, that's going to be the end of the video. And I thank you all very much for watching. As I said, uh, my name is Tucker. If you enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe, check out the boxes on screen, check out the channel for more videos from me just like this. You can leave a like rating, check out those socials and the link in the description. And yeah, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you all next time.